Welcome back to The Knitting Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're gonna to do the Family Knit Adult Farrow hat. Here's what it looks like in two different colors. This is using Bernat Premium. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver brush as my example today. So the brush yarn has a halo look to it. It's extremely soft to work with. It's nice and flexible. And what I'm going to do for you is that I'm gonna get you started on the brim. Now the brim is just a knit one purl one ribbing effect. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to provide you that tutorial now. It's a generic one. Please cast on 90 stitches to begin that process. And what I need you to do is just continue to make your brim until it's five and a half inches high okay so when I look at it here and you are going to be starting with a four and a half millimeter US 7 knitting needle in order to begin I have a 14 inch cord in the circular in order to do this so I'm not using double points for this but you will need the double points at the end once you have this done we're then going to change these knitting needles to a five millimeter a size US 8 sorry a cat jumped on me and what we're going to do is continue that journey then from that point. So please do your brim now. Um, it took me several hours to get here, so just put me on pause, and when you revisit me back in the future, it should start right at this point. So continue, and you can use the video chapters to skip ahead, just in case you're ready to do that now. Let's begin making a brim or edging using Knit One Pearl One. I'm going to demonstrate how to cast on using the twist and transfer method. You're going to start off with just creating a slip knot. We have slower tutorials available here on the Knitting Crowd in case you wanna see specifics like that. We're going to then put on. There are many different ways to cast on, so if you would choose a different way or there's a suggestion from the pattern, please use that method instead. To do a twist and transfer, you're going to slip your needle into the slip knot that we just created, and it will be directly inside, and you're going to take the yarn and wrap around the back needle. You're gonna come through, pull up, give it a little bit of slack, and then come up from the underside and push on and release. Don't be too tight with this method, it is a, it is a tight ta uh, cast on. So just continue to go around the back needle and do a twist and transfer on. Do the number that I have suggested already at the beginning of the tutorial that this is for. And then for this method, you need a multiple of two. So no matter what this size is, it has to be an even number in order to, for this uh, particular brim to work. Continue to cast on the number you need and maybe back here in just a moment. So I've been loading this and it's an even number. I need you to hear this. I want you to place one extra stitch on here. Okay, so even if the pattern says to do 80, do 81, and I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So just do an extra stitch. And what we're gonna do with that extra stitch is something that um, is going to join the two together instantly. So what I've been learning in knitting is that I've been joining on the first round going around, but then I end up with this gapping space. So what this is going to do is to close that space immediately. Now the goal here is to move this extra stitch that you just created over to this side. And you're gonna go in what is called this purl wise. So just straight on in and transfer it over to this needle. Keep things nice and tight. And I want you to take the second one in and go up over top of the, the pointer, keeping that where it is. So noticing that I'm holding that down and just kind of maneuvering it and go right up and over holding that other one in. It takes a bit of practice. And once that's in, you've got it done. And see this gapping space? If you pull the strand that is leading to the bell, it'll pull tight, and therefore you'll have a tight join when you go to start. So now it will say knit one, purl one. It could also say purl one, knit one. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have an even number, it'll work every time. So what you would also want to do is put in a stitch marker so that you know when you've gone all the way around, it just sits on the needle, and then you'll transfer that when you pass by each and every time. So starting in the first one, make sure you do pull tight, and that will keep that join beautiful. So you're going to knit one, and then purl one. So come in between, and purl. And then back, knit one, and purl. 
and you're going to do this all the way around until we get back to the stitch marker and meet me there in just a second. Just to clarify, as you are taking off this needle and knitting, you are bringing it to the other side so you're constantly pushing down on this needle here and this will push it back around the loop and come back up on the other side. So it's a constant revolution with knitting in the round and therefore you can have seamless knitting by doing this concept. So it saves you from using the double points immediately, but in this kind of knitting, you always will have to use your double points at the very end if you're doing a hat in order to give it a close because the wire length doesn't ever change. So then you need the double points in order to be able to accomplish that. Continue around, I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm coming all the way around and my last stitch should be a purl stitch if I'm alternating between the two because we started off with the knit stitch to begin. So if you started off with a purl stitch and then a knit stitch, then a knit stitch would be your end. So it's whatever um, is the opposite one to where you started. So we're going to pull off. This stitch marker here just lets me know that I've gone all the way around and you can just move it on over. So when you're looking at the work, you can see that there is horizontal strands right here. This meant that I did a purl. This meant that I did a knit stitch and it helps to identify that. So just in case you think you're going wrong or somebody distracts you, if you look at that, you can tell what stitch went into where. So when you start then the next round, you start immediately then with your knit stitch because that was the starting of the last round. And you see this is a knit and see this, that was a purl. So you're just gonna continually do this. Now, because you've just gone around once completely, pull tight and then you're going to knit stitch and do that one and pull tight again. You can only pull tight for two stitches before it doesn't impact your work. Okay, so then it allows the join. So you're going to use the starting strand here to be able to sew in anything that is left open, if it is open, and then to hide in the ends for that. So, th so this was a purl, so move it back. And so the next one has to be a knit and you're continuing to alternate between the two. So this is where I'm gonna leave you in this section. And if you're following this with a tutorial, just follow it to the sides that I'm suggesting. You're going to notice that the ribbing will appear really within the next few rounds and you'll really see it, the stretch happening and it's something that's really neat. So welcome back. It's been a long time since you last saw me, just in case that you're working through this tutorial. And what we need to do is that we're going to change to the larger set of double point needles or what you can do is that you can just change out your circular um, heads. So if you have ones that are interchangeable like I do, you can just simply just change those out instead of having to change the cord. If you have needles that do not have that option, then what you'll have to do is just knit with the next cord uh, with the needle attached to it. And then as you're knitting onto that one, you're just basically gonna be taking it off this one that we have. Okay, so that's an option. So make sure they are the right size. So it's a five millimeter. US 8 is your next option in order to do that. So I'm going to switch out my heads now and then we're going to begin the next three rounds from this point. So now that I've changed my heads over and if you're not then just grab another knitting needle that you have with a cord and just use that one to knit with and you'll transfer everything onto the new cord if you want to do that. Cords are a lot easier to do this kind of stuff. Make sure you do place your st stitch marker back in position so that you know when you've gone all the way around. And for the next three rounds, you just have to straight do the knit stitch around. So you're no longer purling at this moment. And so you'll continue then the journey of going around three times. So please knit the next three rows, or three rounds, and meet me back here in just a moment. Moving on to the next round. So three rounds of the knit stitch going around are complete. Now we're going to do an increase, it's called M1, make one, and I'll demonstrate what that means. So I want you to knit the first 15 stitches. So count those out to yourself, put me on hold, and then um, I'll be ready for you in just a second. So just one, two, and three, go to 15, meet me back here in a moment. So 15 are now complete, and we have to continue to repeat this step over and over until we're all the way back around. We're gonna do make one, and I confirmed with your inspirations earlier this week, is that make one for them is always the same unless they tell you otherwise. But what you're going to do is, you see the strand that is right here, that is connecting them. You're going to take this needle and going through there, and then you're gonna use this needle in order to create an extra stitch. It's called make one. So it requires a bit of maneuvering, because things are gonna be tight. So you're just gonna go in and collect the that, okay? And then you're going to knit into that same one on the back side. 
So just a knit stitch around the one you just collected. And we also have a tutorials available for this. This is called Make One. And so now you've just created a stitch out of thin air. And so you're just gonna slide that one off only. And so it's a new brand new stitch. And then you do the next 15 and then make one and do that all the way around. And this will complete that round. So let's start in the diagram. We're now going to go from rounds number one through 22. And I've never really done these diagrams before as far as reading. So we're gonna to have to work ourselves out in this particular case. And what we're going to do is follow the color sequence that we have. So I've listed what my colors were. I have mink, soft mink, khaki, shale, and clay. So when I go to look at the colors, I'm gonna know exactly what that is based on my own changes of what I've done. So what you're going to do is that you're gonna start here and you're going to read the chart. So you have four of the, of the color, the main color. And then you have one here by itself of the next color that is available. And then you have then all of this, and I believe it's seven. So you may wanna just write down seven, seven and etc. And where this ends, it picks up here to create that all the way around. Now here's the thing, because this is jumping seven, this one here will be a very long strand of behind. So what it's telling us in, in the front page is that we need to lock that in. So you wanna lock it about halfway in so that that strand is not so long that it becomes something that you can get your hands stuck in when because it's too long. So we're gonna be doing that in this particular example as well. Once you get to the third round, you're going to be playing with three colors at the same time. So I am going to demonstrate um, for you just a few rounds to get, uh, get you going on this thing and we're going to continue. Now it's in a, a 24 stitch repeat because it includes all this. These here, these upside down half moon shapes are knit two together. And so you can find those videos available to you. But when you're looking at this, for, for example, if I wanted to knit just two, I wanna stick the needle inside two stitches and then knit around. And so then knit two knit stitches just became one. The other thing that is going to be noticing, if you look in the instructions on round, round number 19, it says to slip stitch knit wise. So instead of actually just knitting the first one, you're just gonna slip it knit wise and then over. But what I would recommend when you go to do that is that you want to move your stitch marker over before you do that. So just slip stitch knit wise, then put your stitch marker in and then you can do your two together using that stitch mark or that slip stitch and that last stitch before that as a two together to complete that round, round number 19. So that's something that you can decide for yourself on how you're gonna attempt that, but that's something that is, uh, it's not so big of a deal. So as you begin to eliminate stitches like this, what happens in, in these knit diagrams is that this is missing because there's no longer a stitch there in place and it just is easier to read in that sense. So you just kind of just pretend that that space doesn't exist because it's getting more and more narrow. So let's show you the two-handed, two-color knitting, but then once you get to round number three, there'll be three colors and you're gonna be bouncing between all of that and I'll show you how to lock it too about halfway through. So let's begin round number one of the chart. Let's just get yourself started and then you'll have to read that chart in order to complete on your own. So the first four are going to be a knit stitch with the, the main color. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then the, the charting says that we have that other color, uh, contrast A going in. In my case, it'll be khaki color. So just create a large loop like this, and no slip knots. And when you go to knit with that one, you're just gonna knit and wrap that one in and that will come through like that. So what we're going to do is reset our hands and get everything in, let the tail just fall inside the hat, it's out of your way, and you're going to continue the next part. So we have seven of the, the mink color, this lighter color, before we change back to this color just for one time. So if you're not understanding how I did it, it's called two-handed, two-color knitting. And so you're just gonna slip your hand in just like you were crocheting and then over. So there's a slower tutorial available in that if you wish. Okay, it's here on our channel. So what we want to do is that the next seven are gonna be this color. So we're going to just slide that off because I just knitted with that one. And so the next seven, so I only want you to do first three. So using this hand, wrap around the back. Okay, so we have one, two, 
and three. So because it's seven away, this strand here is gonna be carrying a long time. So they want us to lock it between the needles. So to lock this in, you're going to then stick in your needle like you were supposed to, and then you were going to wrap this over as if you're going to knit it. Then you're going to continue to knit with the color that you really want. And before you're done, put this yarn back. And so this will get then stuck in behind and lock it. So I'll demonstrate again slowly. So to lock your float, you are going to go into the stitch that you want to go into. You want to take the yarn that you were about to do and you want to come up and over as if you're going to knit it. You're going to knit with the one that you really want, but before you're done, move this one back over. And you're gonna come on through. Do you see that? So when you do that, it's sticking in behind and it will lock it into position. So I'll demonstrate one more time. So you're gonna come in, you're going to knit by coming over do this one, move this one back because you're not using it and you're coming in and it will get stuck in behind and lock. Okay, so there you go. So that was how you lock it and now the strand is locked in behind to that position. So you're going to do the final three of the other coloring here. So one, two, and three, and then you're switching back to this color here. So to do this color, just push up on it and pull it through. And because the jump is not very big, you don't have to lock these in. So it's only, they're saying only lock if there's more than five in a row of the same color. So now let's do the next seven here of the white. So we'll do the first three. So we do one, two, and three. And now the next one, we're gonna lock that float in. So going in, wrap around, wrap, unwrap, and pull through. Okay, and now that will get stuck in there and do the final three. So you have your seven in a row. So we have one, two, and three. And then you're gonna switch back to this color here. Just up, so you're gonna to have to push up and off, okay? So you're only wrapping over when you're trying to lock in from what I understand, okay? So that's how you were gonna do that and you wanna continue that sequence all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of number one and the last three stitches should be the, the main color in order to keep the sequence. And you'll of course move up your stitch marker as you go around. So you're ready for round number two, which is gonna be using only two colors again. And you only need to use that locking every time there's all more than five stitches that are skipped. So you don't have to use that in every round. And so when you look behind, you can see that it's locked instead of long strands. So now we're going to continue to round number two, which is identical to round number one. And so you'll start off with your your um, colors here. Now, because you are just coming out of this one here, you may wanna lock the first one in position. Okay, so lock it in behind. And so therefore that'll be stuck and continue along. So it's four of these whites. But now that you know where the colors are, because you can see them, then you can just match what you see below here on round number two. Okay, so I see the next one is green. So I want this one to be green. So I'm matching it because that's what it says or shows on the, on the diagram. So you'll match it. And you're not gonna worry about that coloring of like securing this loose end until later. So if it's a little loose right now, don't worry about it because you'll secure in all those tails at the end of the project or midway, depending when you wanna do it. And again, like you were doing before, you may wanna do the first three because you have seven in a row again of this color. So do the first three and then lock the fourth one in position. So 
going in. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this and I've gotten the swing of it already. So there's four and then you got your five, six, seven and then change over. So do this for round number two and we'll be right back. So I'm coming all the way around on number two and then I'm gonna take you through one more round and therefore I'm gonna leave the rest in your capable hands to get yourself to the top. So this is the end of the round. I can tell by the stitch marker. And what I want to do then is start the next round. So in the charting, let's take a look at what we're up against. So in the charting, we're gonna start here and we're only gonna do be doing three of the color here, the main color. One of the one color we've just been playing, a new color is going in, and then one of the other color we've been playing with, and then there's only five. So because there's only five stitches in a row, we no longer have to lock. So, we so I'm going to introduce a third color to my left hand, and we're gonna start off, and we're only gonna do three of the main color. And if you do wanna lock this one in because it is a long span from the last one, you can. You know, it doesn't hurt anything at all. Okay, so we got the one. And just leave that in behind. So we got one, and then two, and three. So now we're gonna introduce this color back in. So it's gonna come in one before the other one. So we're just gonna go in there. And now the next one is the brand new color that we've been playing with that we're about to start. So just going on in, just hold, and then do a long loop of the new color, you'll secure these tails in later and just push it on. So now this color is gonna go in play and you're gonna knit with that color here. So we just have to get ourselves started with it and then you can position your hands properly. So you got that one. And now let's position our hands. So let the straggler fall to the inside of the hat so it's out of your way. Just hold for a sec, hold, hold, hold. Um, I actually realized that this blue here, this new color we just added, is too long of a span. So you are gonna have to lock it midway on the third one of the white. So I said, and put both of the two colors without the straggler into your left hand. Okay, so we've got both at the same time. And then we're gonna position the right in. And so you just have to grab the color that you wanna play with in order to make it work. So I have to grab this green. So I'm gonna go in and just only push up the green one. So it's gotta be pushed up. So it's gotta come up underneath. The tension matters. So you just wanna make sure that you're just getting the right tension so it's a little more taut. And now we're gonna have five of the white color. So just let everything hold in behind on the left and then just use your five here of the main color. So one, two, three, four, and five, no locking is required. And then just watch the sequence. So the next one is gonna be green. So going in, push up only the green onto that needle. The next one is gonna be that shale color. So going in, only push up the shale. I'm making it look harder than it is. It's easier on my lap than it is on a table. Okay, and then the next one is a green. And then we have the five white again, or the, the mink color. And you're gonna do that sequence all the way around and I'll see you at the end of the round. So I've just come around on the third round. So what I'm going to do is leave the rest for you. And don't forget that when you have this around here, these are uh, knit two together. So just put the two together in the same coloring that you have. Lock anything that is more than five uh, stitches away. So you would have to lock this white here in behind. And then just continue up and on number 19. Number 19, remember what it said? It says to slip stitch the first one knit wise. And then I would put in my stitch marker like I showed you and then you're gonna to put two together when you see this, and then the last two stitches will be a knit two together. And that includes that one that you will slip stitch for the first time. And so you're going to get yourself all the way to number 22, and that's where I'm gonna see you next. And I know it's taking a bit of time in order to do this, um, but it's really well worth, well worth it. And once you get to two colors that you'll see here, it gets a lot easier. Just three colors is always a little bit slower. 
So keep on at it and we'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm working my way along in this and the green technically that I started off with is done for now. Okay, so I don't know if it comes back in the future, but that doesn't matter. Right now, I'm done with this color. So I'm going to trim this yarn along like this. And then I'm just gonna tuck that on the inside of the hat for now. And I'm gonna deal with any loose ends like this later. So just tuck it inside and continue the pattern. And now that we're only gonna be using two colors for a bit, it's gonna be a lot faster than jumping between the three. So um, that's what you need to do. And I'll be right back again. So I followed the chart all the way up to number 22 and that's good to go. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go to the next round with K4, so knit four and then knit two together only with the main color around. And then the next round will be the main color in knit. Once you have that done, you can see chart number two, which is here. And what we're going to do here is to continue this. Now, what we have to also do in this round, we have to get ourselves now back to double point needles. So because the cord cannot go any smaller, we need to start switching these over. So I'm gonna have some tips available for you coming up next. So now we're gonna have our double points ready, get five of them ready, and you are going to knit, and as you knit, the one will fall off. So we're gonna leave this out of the way, and we're going to use this knitting needle. What I'd recommend to you is that every time there's a grouping that says knit uh, four, two together, that consider that is considered one multiple. So whenever you do these, just make sure that you keep always a multiple together on the same needle. It just makes your life a lot easier. So using this needle instead, we're going to knit the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna knit the next two together. Okay, so you put both of them together in the same stitch. And that's considered one multiple. So I want you to look at it and just kind of eye it up on getting all of this around on the four needles. So do another set because you can do more on this needle. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna do knit two together. And it looks like I can do even more on this needle, so let's keep on going. So let's do another four. So one, two, three, and four. And put the next two together. And so kind of look at it and look at it judging to the rest of it. And even if one um, needle or two needles have more groups than others, it really doesn't matter so much. So if you want to jump on over to another needle, all you're just going to do is just push this halfway through and then grab another needle and start again. So knit four. When you do a jump like this, the first one has to be tight. So coming all the way around and in. So we'll try again. It's always awkward on the jump. So if you don't think um, that I'm, you know, my point being is that if you're struggling, it's not you, it's the concept. So then once you do the second one, it's easier. And once you do the second one, just pull tight with your finger pushing it up. And then that was number two, three, and four. And then put the next two together. Okay, so keep on doing this until you are using all four needles going in a circle, and therefore you'll have the fifth one to be able to knit with later. So do this all the way around. This is the next round. So I've just come all the way around, and I'm just pulling out my last one. So these knitting needles are now retired, and everything is on the four points. So it's a little uneven. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm so new at knitting. I think I can manage. So what I'm going to do is knit the completely the next round. So just exactly what I showed you, when you jump the needles, make sure that you're tight, okay? Because you end up with the space. So to start, you need to move the, the needle down. And so you'll grab the fifth one, move this one halfway up so it doesn't slip off. And you're gonna go and when you jump the needle, make sure that the strand is tight. 
the first one is always awkward, like whenever you do a jump. So pull on it, okay, and then just lift and really give it a good tug. And it's the secret's in the second one, because after the second one, you can no longer tighten to bring that join nicely uh, around. So please knit all the way around for this round. So right now we have just finished the main color for knitting. And now we're gonna go and use this chart. So we're gonna do these five rows. You're going to introduce contrast A once again. You will follow the color sequence as you see going all the way around. On the fourth round, you have a uh, knit two together right here. So don't forget to do that. That's why there's a box missing on the fifth round. The fifth round, you will be back just to the main color. Once you have all this done, where I will pick it up in just a few seconds from now, we will finish off the final three rounds then together. So please do this chart now, and I will meet you at the end of number five. So I've now just completed the chart, and now I'm ready for the final three rounds. I'm going to read them to you. You will do it. Okay. That should be coming across more politely, but I'll read it to you and then put me on hold. The next round with just the main color only, you're going to knit three, put two together. Knit three, put two together. Put me on hold and do that right now. If you're ready for the next round after this with the still the main color, it's going to be the main color right to the end. You'll knit two and then put two together. So knit two together. So knit two, put two together, put me on hold and do that. The very last round, you're going to knit one and put two together, knit one and put two together, and that's where I'm going to pick you up at the end of this round. So please do these final three rounds, and let's get this over with. So I've now come to the very end of the project. I'm going to trim this yarn here that is the last yarn that we've been playing with, and I'm just going to trim it along. And what I'm going to do is put this into a tapestry needle. So you notice that I haven't cast off yet. We are going to use this strand to kind of pull things together. Okay, so where you ended, right here, you're just gonna strategically just go and collect the loops. So I would highly recommend that when you collect, just pull a little bit of yarn through just to make sure that it is on there before allowing it to fall off. And you can collect multiple at the same time if you want to, and just continue to do that. So collect all of them and release your needles as you do it. So I've now just came around and you're going to see loose strands for when you were carrying up because I haven't told you how to secure those in. I don't think so. Maybe I did. But what I wanna do now is just kind of pull on the top and close the top down. Okay, and pull snug. Depending on your yarn choice, sometimes the yarn can be really fragile depending on the brand. Uh, this yarn is super saver, so it's pretty good. So I'm just gonna secure in with just crossing over. Don't go too crazy on just doing it. You just need to close it. And then once we have to do that, we have to then put this to the inside and go down through here. If you would like to add a pom-pom, you're more than welcome to do so. And uh, there's tutorials on how to make pom-poms or get a store made one. So I'm going to just secure this on the inside. So let's just go back right to the tip of here. And I'm just gonna take it. And you see a lot of strands here. As those are all the strands I've been just adding as we've been going, but I haven't been securing those in as I've been working my way through it because I can do it at the end. So I'm just tying a knot, making sure it's secure. And as soon as that's done, good to go. So let's turn this back to the outside of this now. And you're gonna have a definite seam line of where you always started and stopped. And I'm just gonna look for it on the inside here. It's right here. So you're gonna see some strands are kind of loose here. So what you have to do is strategically, as you secure them together, you wanna to just kind of fold up. And when you pull on one, you wanna compare it to the good side of the work. So when you pull, it changes the, the structure. So do you see there right here? It just changes that. So if you pull too tight, then what happens is, is that it becomes a problem because it doesn't look like it belongs. So you wanna just make sure that when you secure, you want to stay on the back side of the work only. So uh, grabbing your tapestry needle. Okay, so don't you dare go through the good side of the project and just stay in the strands on the back just to kind of tie it into position. 
And if you're not sure, just turn it around and look on how it's being pulled. Okay, and then if you wanna hide in your yarn, just you can continue to do so, but don't go to the good side of the work at all so you don't see it. So you can just secure all of your loose ends in the same manner so that it'll be done. And then we wanna obviously secure the very beginning one as well. So you're gonna have a very tall hat because of a very generous brim. And so when you do this one here, because you are gonna lean it up here, you're gonna to wanna to favor the inside of the, the brim for when it's folded up. So if you go on this side, you're gonna see it. So because it has to be folded because it's so generous, you're gonna to wanna to just secure this side. Okay, and just go up through the strands. Don't go through to the good side of the work. Just stay in the back here. And when you pull on it, don't change the shape of the, the brim so, so it doesn't look like it belongs. So it doesn't look like it's out of place. And just stay in the back here. And make sure it ties onto a knot so you can secure it. And therefore it should be good to go. And just weave in your ends. Okay, good to go. So when you fold up, it should be pretty good. And therefore you'll have your hat. So go in and secure all your loose ends that you will have. And if you wanna add a pom-pom, be my guest. And that's it for today's family adult pharaoh knit hat. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.